This is the first of the problem solving videos. Uh, you'll see a few like this throughout the semester where I'll take a specific topic, maybe something we didn't quite cover enough in class, or it may just be some additional examples of something we've already worked in class in order to be able to practice something like this. The uh, first question here in this video today is going to deal with significant figures and how do we incorporate the idea or the concept of significant figures into calculations. So the first question here is what is the volume of an Olympic swimming pool which is 50.0 meters long, 25.0 meters wide, and 2.0 meters deep? And so looking at the question we're asked to calculate the volume. And so this is going to relate to um, problem solving techniques as well being able to, one, identify what we're looking for. So identify the question. And then two, identify what we would know. So we know something about the size of this pool because we're given the dimensions, we're given the length, we're given the width, we're given the depth, and so with the length, the width, and the depth, we should be thinking about an equation that we need in order to solve for the volume. And the volume of this, this is going to be a rectangular prism type of shape, length times width times depth, or length times width times height might be how you learn the equation. So this will give us the volume. So if we're looking for the volume of the swimming pool, we have 50 meters, times 25 meters, times 2 meters, for a total of 2,500 cubic meters. Now, the question would be, what do we keep? And also, how do we express our answer? And so, when we're solving for the volume here, what kind of mathematical operation are we performing? We're performing multiplication. So what should we be thinking about when we look at our answer and what we're allowed to keep? We should be looking for the number of significant figures. So how many significant figures are in the 50.0? Three. How many significant figures are in the 25.0? Three. How many significant figures are in the 2.02? Two. So which one limits our answer? It's the two significant figures in the 2.0. So the 2500 is fine. We can't keep any more zeros. We will, don't want to add any decimals here. In fact, if we want to make sure that we're being extremely clear about how many significant figures we have, we would probably want to go ahead and turn this into scientific notation say three decimals to the left, so 2.5 times 10 to the third cubic meters would be an appropriate way of expressing the answer to this question. If instead of 50.0 we had 50.000 and 25.000 and 2.000, it would still be 2,500, but we'd have five significant figures in the 50 and the 25. We'd have four significant figures in the 2.000. And so four significant figures here, we'd keep what we've got. How would we signify that those zeros were significant? Well, one way is to place a decimal at the end anyway. Another way is to put a bar over the last zero that's significant. Usually you would do one and not the other. But again, a completely unambiguous way would be to say 2.500 times 10 to the third cubic meters. The only way around this would be if there's actually more zeros so 50.000 times 25.000 times 2.0000. Now all of these have five significant figures and we would actually keep 
cubic meters. You could still put that into scientific notation if you want to, but you don't have to because that decimal is there now. Now all of those are significant figures. Question two, how much fencing needs to be purchased to prevent non-Olympians from swimming in the pool if the fence should be 61 meters long and 34.4 meters wide. So it may help to draw a picture here. This is a perimeter kind of question. You may have seen these before in math classes. So what operation will we be doing here in order to figure out how much fencing needs to be purchased to enclose the pool? Well, we'll be doing addition. So 61 meters plus 61 meters plus 30.4 meters plus 30.4 meters equals 182.8 meters. However, what should we keep as our answer here? Where are we precise to in these values? We're only precise to the ones place in the 61 meters, even though we're precise to the tenths place in the 30.4 meters. The, the values, the measurements with the least amount of precision will dictate our answer. Since the ones place is less precise than the tenths place, we can only keep to the ones place. So in order to have enough fencing or to purchase fencing to surround this pool, we would actually need to purchase 183 meters of fencing. Notice that when you count significant figures, if there's no decimal place and you were looking at the 61, the least precise place is the first place you start counting. Likewise, if this was 6100, no decimal, we would again start counting at the 1 and that would be where the least precise place is. In the case of values with decimals, such as the 30.4, since we count going to the right, it's actually the last place that we count, which is the place that we're precise to, or 0 0.034. Again, the last place we would count would be where that 4 is. Final question, what if you just have an expression? Let's say that all, all numbers are um, centimeters. So we've got a mixture of operations here. So we've got addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. We also have parentheses. So if you think back to order of operations, what are you supposed to evaluate first here? You should actually evaluate what's in the parentheses first. So we have addition here, 255.0 plus 145.0. Where are each of those numbers precise to? They are each precise to the tenths. So we have 400.0 inside of those parentheses. What do we have inside of the second set of parentheses? 3.045 minus 0.045. This leaves us with 3.000 because in both cases we're precise to the thousands. And then this is all over 1200. After we evaluate what's inside of the parentheses, now we're free to go ahead and do the multiplication and division. What's left is only multiplication and division, and so the only thing that matters for us to find our answer now is the number of significant figures. So we have four significant figures in the 400. We have four significant figures in the 3.000. But how many significant figures are in the 1200? Only two because there's no decimal. So we don't start counting or we don't count any of those zeros. So if we had centimeters plus centimeters, then the 400 is still centimeters. Centimeters minus centimeters, the 3 is still centimeters. Centimeters times centimeters would be centimeters squared. But if the 1200 is also centimeters, then one of those centimeters will cancel. 
and we'll just be left with plain old centimeters here if for some reason we were doing this operation with these units. What's 400 times 3? Well, it's 1,200. So we have 1,200 over 1,200. So our answer is 1. But is it proper to write just 1? How many significant figures should be in our answer? Two significant figures, because that's how many were in the 1,200. 2 is less than 4. We're limited by our smallest number of significant figures in our measurements. So our answer here would be 1.0 centimeters when we evaluate this expression. The only way for this to have more significant figures would be if the 1200 had a bar over one of the zeros. Then we would have to keep more significant figures, that bar over that zero in the tenths, in the tens place means that we would actually have three significant figures. Or if we had a decimal at the end to signify that that last zero was significant, then it would be 1.000 centimeters. Again, putting things in this way of the 1200 is sometimes considered to be ambiguous. If I want to make it very clear that those zeros are significant, then I would express that value in scientific notation. This expression, of course, makes it very clear that those zeros are not significant, whereas 1.200 times 10 to the third means that both zeros are significant.